Hi all, it's Aerostuff FPV introducing the build video of the new Silver Eagle VTL Pusher for medium to long range FPV and autonomous waypoint missions. This particular FPV aircraft can cover over 25 kilometers on average with a 4S2P lithium ion flight battery. But this distance is covered with a 14 inch slow fly prop, but the aircraft has greater results with a direct drive prop like a 14 by 7 which is more efficient. So this particular design is the outcome from my development of building capable FPV planes using experimental airlines building techniques. And what's different in this design compared to its predecessors is that it's having a Depron wing which is made wider and thicker but it's approximately 200 grams lighter than all the slimmer wings I built from regular foam board which is about 450 grams on average. But the Depron wing idea has been around for quite some time and I applied it to another design of mine which is an FPV tractor with a T-tail and got me over one hour of flying time per charge. So the Depron wing construction is gonna be the future for my builds. But its predecessor, the Peace Hawk LR Plus having a foam board wing is my most capable FPV plane I ever made because I covered over 10 kilometers with it multiple times. And the build videos for that aircraft are published on the channel as well. And if you want to go to those videos, I'll put those at the top right in the corner of this video and in the description as well for you to check out. But in this video, I'm going to narrate through the entire building process, which I recorded and recommend relevant videos as well for you to check out if things are unclear. So that's enough intro and information about this aircraft. So let's begin building the Silver Eagle. As always, I'd like to give you guys an overview of my electronics before we're going to start building the aircraft. So I have a 600 kV motor and a 14 inch prop as the power plant for this one with a 60 MPSC. I have four metal geared servos, the Matek F405 wing flight controller and the L9R receiver. And this is optional, but I have a panning device for looking left and right in my long range flights and a 600 milliwatt video transmitter broadcasting on 5.8 gigahertz. So we're gonna construct the fuselage using the experimental airlines techniques. If you know, you know, and if you do not know, I have linked the videos on the top right for you to check out how you could build the fuselage tubes and the arm and wings and tail sections if needed. Here you see two five millimeters thick foam board sheets that are gonna be constructed into the fuselage I want. The big or long piece right there is 57 and a half centimeters long and the short one is having a length of 30 centimeters and the dimensions of a three inch height and a two and a half inch width are the same for the both of them. Here you're seeing me cutting halfway through the foam board using the experimental airlines techniques and here I'm using my own technique of taking a ruler and fatiguing the foam board by widening the halfway cut through the fuselage. And at some corners and areas, I fatigue the foam board even more to simplify the folds into the square that it's gonna be. And of course, it's gonna be the same for the short fuselage section. And it's so easy to fold the corners that I just do it with my hands. So here's the technique of taking a foam board strip and taping it on the outside of the fuselage, which makes it possible to very easily glue the fuselage into its shape by gluing another strip on the inside. After being done with the two independent fuselage sections, we're gonna join them together to form one whole 87 and a half centimeter length fuselage. So here you can see me eyeballing the fuselage after taping uh, the two together because you want to align them first before regretting it later. So as you guys noticed, this is gonna be the front section. It's gonna be the nose because the hatch has been already made for my big LiPo batteries that are gonna be in there. So after taping the two fuselage sections together, I'm gonna use some hard plastics to glue it internally together to join the two for good. And so I'm gonna do it on both sides internally and then use another plastic card to be glued externally on the underside of the aircraft.
So after merging the two fuselages together, it's time to also reinforce and clean up the front section with the hatch and a lot of tape. Here are the dimensions on a five millimeters thick foam board sheet. And if you wanna have clear and specific instructions on how you wanna build a V-tail, I've put it on the top right in the corner for you to check out. So here you're seeing me taping the outside and soon the inside of the V-tail. And then later on finishing the control surfaces as well. And then um, applying the shape by gluing something inside the cut that I made. And that's gonna be this section right here. So here you see me gluing a very small in diameter foam board strip inside the cut and then using a template to maintain the 90 degree shape. And after the glue has hardened, I am left over with a complete V-tail that's ready to be glued on the fuselage. Here you're seeing a block of foam board that's gonna be glued internally where the motor mount is gonna be because there's a lot of force and vibration coming from the power plant. So it's important that you know your motor mount has some support and the foam board doesn't fatigue over time. And after the glue has hardened, I'm ready to put all the electronics through the inside of the fuselage because everything is pre-connected as you can see. So the flight controller, GPS and ESC are pre-connected. And when everything is inside, I'm ready to glue the motor mount in place. So here you're seeing me cutting out the foam to foam contact section for the V-tail. And then there's a lot of hot glue coming on there for the V-tail to be perfectly aligned and being pressed on until the glue has been hardened. And then the tail section, the V-tail or the empennage is almost finished. And your V-tail is completely finished when it's been secured and reinforced using plastic cards like this. So here you're seeing me securing the servos in place for the V-tail. And then after the glue has been hardened, I centered the servos and linked up the control horns. And after that, I did the same for the wings that we're gonna build. And these are Depron wings, not foam board wings. And then later on, I also tapered the back for better efficiency for the prop. So now it is time to determine the CG location. So how you will do that is load the airframe up with a flight battery. And if you're gonna use a panning servo or, or something like that, just a panning device, panning tool, you would just tape that up at the front like that. Then you would just balance the whole airframe on your hand or on something and see where it just balances perfectly. So it doesn't tip forward or backwards. And in my case, it's I think it's like, the dead center of the fuselage and I just marked it here with the crosshair so that's going to be the focus but I'm going to make a big hole right here to establish the flight controller to have access to the flight controller and to also reinforce uh, the sides here with paint sticks internally and also drill holes into them to have the wing tie downs the carbon little sticks that would um, secure the wing and here you can see the wing tie downs here and that's going to be the same on this airframe as well. The main wings are going to be made from Depron because Depron is incredibly light and I found out that the main wing could be made 200 to 250 or even more grams lighter than when it's from foam board. So here you can see a big sheet of five millimeters thick Depron with a six inch cord and an 80 centimeter span. So here's the process of taping the outside of the wing so that the Depron would not snap. And it's also for the looks and aesthetics of the aircraft as well. So here are a total of eight one inch strips, roughly the same length as you know each wing section. So approximately 60 to 70 centimeters long. 
but I'm gonna use the experimental airlines techniques to form the airfoil when the top section of the Depron sheet is gonna be folded over. And so these one inch strips are gonna be glued one inch behind uh, the folding point like the experimental airlines techniques. And I'm using foam board strips for the bottom and Depron strips for the top. And I'm using the carbon spar itself for the separation between the two foam board strips at the bottom. But here you can see the Depron strips glued in place. And sometimes I'm trimming away just a little bit. And after the strips are in position, I am proceeding the experimental airlines techniques to finish the wing up. So after I was finished with the wing, I made these custom control surfaces, aileron control surfaces from foam board. And these are roughly two inches in cord total, but they are tapered. So at the root, they are like two and a half or so. And at the tip, they are one inch. So right now you are actually free to customize your aircraft using your own electronics. So here you can see the video transmitter on the hatch itself. And this is because the AKK X1P video transmitter has a not so optimal antenna cable. So I came up with the idea of using foam board pieces and make this unit for the antenna and the antenna mast to point up at all times. And there was no other place than on the hatch where it could be convenient enough and to be separated as much as possible from the GPS and receiver. So here's my method of using paint sticks with holes drilled into them to be glued inside the fuselage right there and to have these carbon wing tie down sticks to protrude through the fuselage so that the wing can be secured using rubber bands. And here is the camera device with the panning servo to look left and right and right there you see the battery stop for preventing the battery to shift forward. So here's the section of me constructing the winglets, which are aerodynamic devices that makes your plane fly more efficient because they cancel out vortices. But most of all, they are for the stability and aesthetics of the aircraft because they are traditional on the V-tail pushers that I make. These are not hard to construct or make, so you just see the finished product right here, right now. And the underside right here was been trimmed down eventually because they were too big. And at last I made the nose section. So here you can see a piece of foam board with the same height as uh, the nose. And then I created a triangle um, and then glued that on the folded piece of foam board, covered it with black tape, and then eventually glued it and taped it on the front section. And after everything was linked up like the GPS and the receiver and everything was configured in INAV, which is the firmware and program that the flight controller uses, I was ready for my first maiden flight. And if you do not want to miss out on that video, please subscribe to the channel. And that was it guys for this video. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like the series that I do, if you like the build videos like this, please leave a like and an appreciative comment and subscribe to the channel to not miss out on the upcoming flight videos and build series that I do. So I wish you guys happy days, happy flying and blue skies, and I'll see you at the flight video.